This is the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and it's a mailbag. We answer your questions here as they come in live or if they came in via super thanks. But we begin with a super chat. $5. Thank you, C. Conley23. Hey, Tom, what trade does Dallas make, if any, to help bolster the team for a late run? I mean, I love offensive linemen. Mm, tough luck finding those guys who are good. Could, if, if there are injuries, replacements, of course, make sense. Still wouldn't say no to another receiver, a dynamic one to elevate your passing offense to a whole new level. Another defensive tackle, although maybe Osa breakout here. I'll say this. Remember, this team was not all in on uh, the front office this year. The front office was not all in on this staff. So I think that's a big deal to consider from that standpoint that maybe they're not going to be super committed from that standpoint. Joseph Rodriguez, the Cowboys draft Marvin Mims from Oklahoma. I don't know how big of a need receiver is going to be for you. You know, are you all the way out already on Jalen Tolbert? If you are, which I don't think they are, by the way, I think to be clear, I think they just got to be patient there. We'll see. So I don't think receiver is a huge need. I will say I do like Marvin Mims quite a bit as a receiver. Dallas 8-9, MM next scapegoat. I saw Dak average 225 yards per game in his first three seasons and 1.4 TDs. Rushes at 239 yards per game and 1.4 TDs. If you include the Vikings game last year, one turnover, rushes fine. Here's the big difference. Um, for starters, that's not where the Cowboys are at. Um, also, those yards per game numbers are, I'm checking my math right now, eh, pretty accurate, actually, in the end. You're talking about a soon-to-be 30-year-old Cooper Rush versus early career Dak. We're talking about the here and now, when the quarterback you've had the last three years, when healthy, 2019-2021, averaged over 302 yards per game. So, yeah, like similar stat numbers early in their careers from yards per game, touchdowns, although also not including rushing numbers, which kind of feel like important there. Rush has more than done his job as a backup QB, but the Dak Prescott we've seen the last couple years is very different than the overall quarterback we've seen from Cooper Rush. Like that, This is the best Rush has played, and his best is the average for Dak early in his career. Dak is by far the better QB, but be happy Rush has played so well. Julian Hunter, a $2 super chat, just says thanks. Thank you very much, Julian. That's a super thanks, by the way. If you don't know what super thanks are, allow us to explain. It's a new feature, newish feature from YouTube. You can donate, ask questions outside of live videos. Click the thanks icon because we appreciate your support here at the Cowboys Report. If you send in a super thanks, we will give you guys a shout out. From Jason Folks, with Schultz being injury prone, how much drop off is there to Ferguson and Hendershot? I like the kids. They haven't played that much in terms of like really being involved in the passing game. I I, I like I think there's some excitement there because they're young, they're new. Schultz has been banged up this year, healthy before this season, so I'm not sure I'm gonna call him injury prone quite yet at this point. I got to see more of Ferguson Hendershot. Uh, they've done a good job in, in a, a limited role. R Schultz has been pretty quiet this year. I think there's some difference between Dak and Rush, like in terms of like just the chemistry overall. I think there's better ones between Dalt or between Schultz and Dak. Hasn't been 2021 20, Schultz quite yet. I got to see more of the young guys though before I, I anoint them. Jesse Gonzalez, trade one, release one, extend one. All right, uh, good question, really. Uh, if I'm releasing somebody... I mean, I might cut Josh Ball. Here's the thing. The 53rd player on your roster right now is Nashawn Wright, which I'm not cutting him, but he's your 53rd player at this point. Um, if I am going to trade one, uh, I probably... The one that makes the most sense is one of your defensive linemen because you're deep there, but you don't want to just trade away for no reason. If you're re-signing, extending one... With the way they've played so far, can I can I get Dante Fowler super cheap? I don't want to pay big money for my number four edge, but he's done a good job so far. Uh, beyond that, maybe it's Noah Brown is the one you want to extend from that standpoint. Now, today's show is made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code COWBOYS125. 100 bucks down, going to get you a 125% deposit bonus 
when you use that promo code Cowboys125 and put down at least 100 bucks. The Eagles, as we sit here filming this, are a four and a half point favorite in this one. The over under set at 42.5. Dallas loves being the underdogs. They are again this week. Maybe a bet on the win Sunday Night Football. Do it on BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Cowboys125. All right, from Pool of Z, Super Chat, $5. If Dallas beats the Eagles this week, what are the chances of winning the NFC? It goes way up. Uh, I assume you mean like getting the number one seed. Uh, winning the NFC, it's all about the playoffs, so we'll see what happens in December. But if you beat the Eagles, that's a big-time boost for you as the Cowboys' number one seed chances. All right, William Reynolds, a $50 super thanks. Get in here, Jeremy. Thanks. As always, I love the show. If the Cowboys beat the Eagles, I would like Jeremy to, on a live show, refer to you as a god. That's the deal, William. If the Cowboys beat the Eagles, Jeremy has to introduce me as God, which doesn't really impact the game at all, but I love it, William, who is our number one super thanker here on the Cowboys Report. So let's show William some love in the comments section. Type, uh, we'll get that fixed, there you go. Type WR in the comments section to show William Reynolds, just go to the next thing, Jack, to show William Reynolds some love. I appreciate that, my friend. Everyone spam WR in the comments section for William Reynolds. Reynolds, and that $50 super thanks he sent in. All right, back to our live questions from Caden Bramble. Was this the Osa breakout game you were waiting for? I hope so. Uh, I kind of want to see it be more than just one game, but this could be the breakout game. I think from a pure one-game standpoint, seven pressures against the Rams, that was a breakout performance. I have to see it be sustained, otherwise it's a flash in the pan. But if he plays great th the rest of the way, this is the game we will look back on and go, yep, that was the one. From Bam Bam, when Rush beats the Eagles, can you really even pull him and go in, into a 5-0 and Philly team and, and beat him? How do you win that game? Do you win the game with 76 net passing yards again, which I doubt you do? Then yes, of course you pull him. Like Again, Rush has done a fantastic job. But the hot hand argument always gets applied when maybe it shouldn't. Like this is, you are not winning games because of your offense. You're winning games with your offense. If you want to make a real run, a real deep playoff run, you need better offensive play. You have a better QB once he's healthy waiting for you. Now we'll be live on Sunday, make no mistake about that for a Cowboys vs. Eagles watch party. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit that big red button and join us. It'll be me. Told producer Jamie will be behind the scenes as well. Hit that big red button and subscribe. $10 from my guy Mark. Thank you, Mark. I'm impressed with the D, but the Rams offense is not the offense from last year. The Rams are not as good as with most teams we have played, but most of the good teams of last year have big holes like Green Bay with no stud receiver. So I agree with Mark. Um, the Rams, like the Bengals can fall in this conversation too. They're not the same team from last year. I mean, we saw the Rams offense not be able to run the football, constantly getting pressured by Stafford, and the Cowboys defense does get credit there. And that's also why I'm excited right now, because you're defending Super Bowl champion, you just beat, you beat the AFC runner-up, the Bucs have looked vulnerable, you got a chance against Philly to win with your backup or your starter, whatever, you've got a real chance to win the NFC. That's kind of why I was so mad they didn't go all in or at least be aggressive this offseason. They could have helped their team significantly. You can make a run in the NFC because the team there aren't that many actually good teams right now. You're in that Cowboys too in that they can make a run. So make the run this year. That's all I want. Samuel Duran, uh, when Dak comes back, should we stick to what Rush is doing? Throwing the ball for a buck fifty and just run the football. Should things change when Dak is back? This offense works when your defense is giving you nine points on a, a defensive score and a, and a blocked punt and all that stuff. You still need more offensively. Do you, you want to have your defense keep playing great? Yes. Do you want to run the football as teams dare you to? Yes. But if you get more points, you should want the more points too. So I don't want to get lost in the, the end result 
when your offense has been like a bottom 10-ish offense right now in the NFL, bordering on bottom 15, like you can do better on offense. Let's do better. I'll say this. I hope that the better coaching job, better ground game stuff that you've seen as of late carries over. When Dak comes back, maybe there's some Ewing theory at play there. Slash, it kind of was like a, oh shit, we, we have to do better on offense, coaching staff stuff. So, like, yeah, if winning games by running the football ton, sure. But playoff time, you're not going to win games 150 pa passing yards. You're going to need a little bit better play as it gets tougher and tougher later in the season. And that's what the elevation in quarterback can benefit you with. From Hanson. Anyone from the Panthers you want Jerry to look into? He won't, but just for fun. I mean, I would call about all of their good players, right? I'd call, um, you know, DJ Moore. I'd call about Brian Burns. I'd call about, uh, and they're not going to trade Ike McWanu. You can call about one of their corners if you want. I doubt they're going to trade those guys. McCaffrey makes no sense for you. Again, rebuilding does not mean fire sale. So, yes, I would call, see what, see what the, the asking price is. I'm not going to get my hopes up either. I want you guys now to name a player who you want the Cowboys to trade for. Keep it somewhat realistic, but let me know in the comment section. From Anakin Autism, if DQ would stay on as DC, keep McCarthy. If DQ is going to leave for a coaching job, boot McCarthy and give Dan Quinn the top job. I get where you're coming from. I do. I will say this. I am a big believer in... You need to, if you, if you move on from Mike McCarthy, you've got to do a real head coaching search. A, you're required to by the Rooney rule. The last two jobs that have come open, you've interviewed the bare minimum of candidates. You gave it to Jason Garrett. You interviewed Marvin Lewis and Mike McCarthy last time. You got to do a real search if you fire your head coach. If the answer's Dan Quinn, that's fine. But give me a real search first. Maxter65, do you think the Cowboys will win 13-plus games? Also, Jeremy confirmed Closet Cowboys fan. I can confirm that too, Maxter. I would say maybe. The schedule's not that challenging. You can make a run. If you get to 11, 12, 13, I think where we were before the year began, you're in the postseason. Make the run we're all waiting for, and we'll all feel good there. 